Welcome to a Fashion Doll Shoes tutorial. This time I'm going to make her heels for Miss Piggy's boots. And I'm using these resin castings I have made earlier. And I was going to show you the mold I used for making these, but I couldn't find it. So I I guess it's one of those I had to throw away because they got torn the last time I used them. Um, anyway, I I made the original heel. I made just one one piece out of modeling clay, and then used that one to make a latex mold, and then used the mold to cast these. And if if you're good at making identical pieces with modeling clay then it's definitely easier to just use that to make two heels but as I've said before I I can't make identical pieces so I, I have to make a mold to get good enough heels I I guess I could just make two heels and accept that they are not identical but it's it's not good enough for me i i would always look at them and think that i should have used the mold they would look so much better so this is what the heel looks like when it's in place and i i have used this same design in the other boots I have shown in, in an earlier video. This is basically, I think, when, when the heels were stacked heels made with stack, stacking leather to make the heel, they used this kind of designs. The thin ones, the stiletto heels, came a lot later. Okay, um, I'm going to cover these with leather and it's almost the same color as the leather I used for the outer sole. I didn't have enough of this for the heels or I would, would have used the same leather so I'm, I'm using this and it's it's close. It's not the same but it's close enough. And when when you're covering the heels with fabric or leather or whatever you... something else than painting them, pick the worst pieces, worst castings you have. The ones with air bubbles on the surface and unevenness or whatever because it won't show when you cover the heels. Save the best ones for the painting because it's going to be easier to to get good results if if the castings are already have a nice surface, you don't need to sand or otherwise treat very much. Okay, then I'm just first figuring out where to cut where to cut pieces to cover the heels. And as this has curves, you need to check all the way around so that it's long enough on every side. That's, that's good enough for that. And leave a bit of extra here. This part should go about here, halfway across the front because it's 
it's best to have the seam here in the middle but leave a little extra there it's it's easy to cut away any excess and I don't know what these holes are I probably oh I, I know what these are I made uh, the this part of the heel for for a stiletto heel made of little piece of metal pipe so the this hole puncher was perfect for that get perfect round pieces so it's not not just for making holes it's also for cutting round pieces and then I can use this one to cut cut the other other piece of right. and then I'll start with gluing those here in these heels just the sides and back first And then the good thing about using leather for this is that it stretches a bit, so you just pull it tight here so it'll go along the curves in the heel. If you have a straight heel, it's of course easier. But these have curves, so it needs to be pulled a bit. Then just check that it doesn't have any wrinkles. heel is made of really hard material it's easy to stretch the leather tightly yes you don't need to worry about crushing or breaking anything and the resin resin is probably the second hardest material I have used for high heels. The metal pipe is, is the hardest one. And you can use plaster castings as well. I have made these same heels. Actually I think the heels in the previous boots were plaster castings. Because if, if you make a thick one like this it won't break, uh, especially if you cover it with leather. You have the plaster casting and then plenty of glue and then the leather and it's, it won't break. I think I have dropped the one of those boots onto the floor and it didn't break. It's the, the leather on the outside and the glue they will protect the plaster casting inside. The only thing 
you need to be careful with plaster castings is moisture. You can't get them wet. But that's well you wouldn't anyway because these doll shoes well they, they are leather and glue and all sorts of materials that aren't that fond of water so you need to keep them dry anyway. Okay, so then we'll leave that one dry and make the other one. It's best to let the glue dry at this point and then continue after after it's dry. So everything will stay in place. You don't need much extra here on on top, but you do need a little, and I'll show you later why. Okay, then just stretch it and press it in place. Now I'll leave those to dry and continue later. Okay, the glue should be dry enough now for continuing. Uh, the next step is to cut these pieces you turn in the front and make sure it, when you turn it to the front it goes along this curve here and then just cut straight the seam should be as straight as you can get it that's not quite in the middle doesn't need to be exactly in the middle but as close as you can get so now it's not straight then you need to be really careful not to cut too much just a little bit at a time and then check and cut more until you get the desired result. It's almost but not quite. And of course there's the other side so if you cut too much at this point the only problem is that the seam won't be in the middle. The other side is much more important to get right. But it's now just right. And then I'll glue this in place. It's easier to do it like this. Because when this stays in place, it's easier to get the other side right just press it there make sure it's go 
those along the surface here. There are no wrinkles or bumps anywhere. Okay, and the other one. There's a lot of extra here, so I'll just cut it away to make things a bit easier. Too wide, so a little bit away from it, and now it's it's in the middle, and then just glue it there. You don't need to worry about this end at this point. Just if there's a lot of extra like this one had, it it's easier to cut it away so you can see better what you're doing. one and this part is a bit tricky because you need to cut this other side so that its edge goes just here so these edges they can't overlap that looks ugly so you need to need to Get it right. Fortunately, leather stretches, so if if it gets a bit too short, you just pull it, so it'll reach the edge of the other side. Okay, this is it's perfect here. That overlaps in the middle, so just remove a little bit here in the middle, and then see. Looks like it's still still overlapping. Overlapping really very small slice. Okay. Now it's, it's a little bit there. I'm just at the point where it's really easy to cut too much. So it's actually easier to just feel with your fingers whether there's overlapping. And now it's it's perfect. And if if the overlapping is really very small, you can just glue this so that you put this edge in the right place and then 
just press the rest of it tightly against the heel and it's sort of in addition to stretching the leather it can also compress a little so if you press here and press here and press tightly against the heel it will go into the correct place even if there's really small overlapping it's safer that way because at some point the overlapping gets so small that if you cut any more you're going to cut too much here and it's also a good idea to put some glue here in the edge of the opposite piece so it, the seam will look nicer when it's glued shut and then just press the leather in place so that it's tightly against the opposite edge and there's no gap and remove any excess glue that may come out of that seam If you manage to do this properly, the seam won't be easy to see. Of course it depends a lot on the material. If you use material that has some sort of patterns, the seam will show because you you need to be really good if you're going to match the patterns with in a curvy piece like this. So it's it's best to use material that has only one color. Of course, you can also hide the seam by doing it so that you first you don't put the outer sole in place first. You have the insole structure, you put the heel in place and then you make the outer sole long piece that goes from from the front of the heel to the bottom of the foot and that will cover the seam. Uh, I don't usually use that structure because it's it's harder to make. Then the next this is the hardest part of making this sort of heels. You need to be so careful. that you don't cut too much so the best, best way to make resin heels is probably to paint them if you, if you manage to get really nice surface no air bubbles no unevenness, nothing like that, then painting is definitely the best option. Okay. That looks right. And 
then I'll get some more glue. to get too much of the glue on the outside. Yeah, like this. This is what shouldn't happen. But just wipe it away. edges together now oh, there's even more excess glue and when you wipe away the glue the seam opens and then you press it shut and then there's more glue coming out and so on and so on fortunately PVA glue transparent when it's dry so it it won't show too badly Just let it dry. This one's definitely better than that. And the next thing is to cut away the excess at the bottom. Here you can cut along the edges. So you get it. even surface like this you can check that it's it stays upright quite nicely and the same for the other one and it's best to the pieces here before gluing the heels in place because it's easier to cut cut them while the heels are not in place so I'm going to use the same same leather just cut pieces that are slightly larger the bottom of this heel like this and then putting the glue on the leather because it should go in a larger area than, than the bottom of the heel not too much but enough to get it stick properly but not so much that Then I'll just press this in place and the idea is that 
when the glue is dry you just cut away the excess so you get get a piece that is exactly the right size if you cut the pieces first they may be too small or not, not quite the right shape at some point but when, when you do it this way it's going to be exactly the right size, size and shape you just need to be careful when cutting so that you won't cut this leather that's in, in this side side of the heel here. Alright, I'll let those dry and then I'll continue. Now to the next part which is cutting cutting away excess here at the bottom and you just need to be careful just to go along the edges but not not cut too much and the good thing about spreading the glue wider than needed is that it hardens the surface of this leather piece and makes it easier to cut accurately at this stage. And the biggest problem I have with this stage is that I can't see properly. Really trouble seeing small small things no matter which glasses I have on actually. At this scale it's sometimes easier without any glasses. But that's it's neat enough. Nobody's going to use a magnifying glass to look at these boots anyway. It's basically the biggest problem is that if there's something that isn't quite right, I will know it and knowing it is sort of worse than seeing it like other people may not see it but if I know there's something wrong it bothers me no matter whether you can see it or not It's one of those things you just need to learn to live with and hopefully relax a little and don't take it so seriously. Yeah, that looks nice. So now the heels are ready to, to be glued in place. And this upper upper part. First thing is you need to cut away this front and cut right down here vertically and then cut along the edge of the heel so there's you don't need any extra 
leather here in the front. You just go go along the top edge of the heel, and the reason for that is when you put this in place, that will go against the outer sole and there won't be a gap. But the other other edges here if if you cut these the same way as this one, I'll show it with this. If you put it you can see this there will be a gap. So you need to leave a bit of extra here on these sides so that when you put the heel in place it will glue into this leather part here and there shouldn't be too much of a gap. It's it's really hard to explain but hopefully you you understand when I'll show you. But first First, I'm cutting this other one as well. Just along the edge here. So, okay. Bit right. Okay, and then with this. This one, I'll start by cutting from this away this front front part ends, and then first I'm leaving a bit more than I probably need because I'll, I want to check check it first. So it's a little bit less here and more here in the back. So this is sort of curved. And now when I put it in place, it will go here. As you can see, it covers the edge of this outer sole. It's actually here there's a bit too much leather, but this other side is is quite good. So I'll just trim this one a bit. And like always, you need to cut a little bit, then check to see what it looks like, and then cut more if needed, and check, and cut, and check. So, a little bit at a time, just to make sure you won't cut too much anywhere. Okay, that looks, that looks right. So the idea is that this edge of the inner sole can be seen, but the edge of the outer sole is here on, under this leather that's glued to this heel. So it, there's only one seam visible. And then let's take the other one before I'm gluing anything into place. Just cutting here. And when when you have done this several times, you learn to see how much you need to cut. So you often get it right the first time. Like this one. It's, it 
clocks. Okay. Maybe just a little bit there. Check that the heel is in what position so that this is straight across so it's not like this. This is how it should be. And then Sides and looks. It looks quite all right. Although this looks a bit different than the other one, and I think there's there's some difference either. Let's see. Either one of the heels is narrower or, or there's a difference in Yeah, I think this this so this is wider than this and that makes for the difference. It's not not a big problem. I just noticed that that there is there is a difference. They don't look quite the same. But that's that's what happens with handmade stuff. It's just impossible to make truly identical pieces. There are always small differences and it it doesn't matter. I just noticed those. And then I'll just glue these heels in place, putting glue here and here and inside. Um, plenty of glue, but not so much that it will come out out of the seams. And put it in place. Yeah. Check that it's straight before pressing it in place now that it has the glue in it. Okay, that's great. And then, then check that sides look like they should. And then press press these upper edges of the leather tightly so there won't be any gaps or open seams. And then we'll check. Okay. Well, most most of the shoes probably won't won't allow the doll to stand alone. But you should always try try to make the shoes so that at least the shoes can stand alone, so that they are evenly balanced. That can be difficult, especially with stilettos, but you should at least try. You won't make it all the time, but, but at least you have tried. You've done your best. 
And that's really what matters. You just do the best you can. Because, well, how could you do any more? And these, making these, this kind of shoes, it, it will take time time and practice but then again if you're using good materials and you want nice results you don't count the hours it's different when you make stuff for sale you just want to make it fast because you you can't really get people to pay as much as you'd need to pay for something like this. You can already see from the videos I have made, this is the fourth part, I think. And even if you count the time for all these videos, it's not the entire time I have used for making these because I have cut out some some parts where I just made made the same steps for for the other shoe and there's all the planning and just thinking about how to make certain things and it's really surprising how much time this sort of thing can take but I don't count the hours because I do this for fun not for profit okay. well, then I'll check this one and it can stand I'm not sure if these heels are quite the right Height, but I'll have to put this on the doll when the glue is dry and then that's the ultimate test but basically they are now finished just need to let the glue dry and then put them on the doll and, and we'll see And here is Miss Piggy as she's wearing her new boots. Uh, the heel is it's just right. I thought it must be because the earlier boots were okay, but it just looked on on those plaster castings it looked like the heels slightly too high but those are just fine I haven't decided on the laces yet uh, actually that pink yarn is it looks quite nice I think I'll, I'll leave it for now and replace it if I find something nicer You can see them from all angles and that material is is a bit funny. I don't think I've ever seen boots with the map of Africa on them, but I like using unusual materials. 